together say, I believe. I believe. Come on, don't be ashamed. It's gonna get better. Say, I believe. I believe. Now, if there's any sick among us, just say, I'm healed. I am healed. That's just I'm healed. I am healed. I'm healed. I am healed. By the power. By the power. Hey. By the power. Claim your claim it, claim it. I am healed. I'm healed. I am healed. I'm healed. I am healed. By the power. By the power. By the power. Come on, grab my hand. Shake it, shake it. Good afternoon. I listened to Brother Smith just now bring that message on love. And he brought it in a yeoman's manner. And I appreciate what he does for this church and for my heart. Well, there's a song I like to sing right quick before I get started this afternoon. And it goes, there is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word, word, it sounds like music in Mine ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Je Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus Because he first loved me It tells me of a Savior's love Who died to set me free it tells me of his precious blood the sinner's perfect plea oh how i love jesus Oh, how I love G Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Oh, Heavenly Father. We come now. We come in the precious and the most powerful name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and is our Savior. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to come to you. Now, Father, we come to you as humble as we know how, with bowed heads and with humbled hearts. Thanking you, Father, for allowing us to come before your throne today. We ask, God, that your word would come forth today, Father, that you would touch the preacher man and speak through him. Set him down while you stand up. I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you, Father, for allowing us to handle your word. We thank you, Father, and we ask for all our blessings in Jesus' name and for his sake. And we all said, amen, amen, and amen. 
I like this message that God has put on my heart today. And it comes from the book of Malachi. It's Malachi, the third chapter. And I'll be reading the first six verses out of that third chapter. Malachi wrote these words that came through him from God our Father. He said, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? And for he is like a refiner's fire and like a full of soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleased unto the Lord, as in the days of old, as in far former years. I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against the false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear me not, saith the Lord of hosts, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. This message is a uh, never-changing God. A never-changing God. When you get to this book of Malachi, Malachi is one of the 12 minor prophets. The book of Malachi is the last book before we get to the New Testament, which brings Jesus into play. Malachi, his name Malachi means my messenger. That's the proper noun when it's used as a name, but it also should be used as just a noun to identify people as Malachites my servant malachi to understand malachi more you need to go back to the book of nehemiah in the book of nehemiah you know he was commissioned to build the wall around jerusalem after nehemiah got the ball the wall built the people of the town of the israelites were commissioned to build god's temple they got so complacent so they start building their own houses and, and left the temple unbuilt for a long time. And Haggai came in and told them, hey, you're living in paneled houses while my Lord's house is in ruins. And they had to come back and, and finish up the temple. And finally, the temple is built. And here is Nehemiah and the people. He called all the families and tribes together. And in the 10th chapter, uh, around the 28th verse, you'll find where Nehemiah has brought all these folk together and they made an oath to Nehemiah, the things that they would do, and that was to follow the laws of God, and the things they wouldn't do, and that was to go to other people and, 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 and mix in with the other folk. Because, you know, there was a lot of heathens outside of the walls of Jerusalem. And you get back down, you, keep, you, you, you listen, you read that in, that in that 10th chapter and go all the way back to the 13th chapter around the 6th verse after 32 years of Nehemiah being with, with King Artaxerxes, he came back to check on these folk and guess what? All the pledges they made to Nehemiah, they broke. You know, more like us today. We come to the Lord and says, we are going to do this and we're going to do that. And before you know it, before we walk out the church, we done done something we said we weren't going to do. And these folk was doing the same thing. They were, they were going, they, they had broke every covenant they made, uh, the oath they made with Nehemiah. 
And Nehemiah got so mad at him that Nehemiah took those beards of those folk and were ripping beards out. And was, and was making them pledge again what they would do. And here it is, a decade past Nehemiah, and they back at it again. God raised up this prophet, Malachi, to go to these people and tell these, these Israelites, his people, what they were doing. But they were so sarcastic with this, this prophet, Malachi. Every time that he indicted them on something, you know, because he told them, the first thing he told them was, God loves you. My brother just got done talking about love and how God's love is agape. In spite of, he still loves us. In spite of these people being disobedient to God's word, God sent a message to them by the prophet that he still loved them. He still sent that message to us today. Even us today that, that have broken some of the, the, the covenants of God. And we know we have. All have sinned, what Paul had told us, and come short of his glory. And God still sends that message that he loves us. And, and these people ask Nehemiah, how have God loved us? You know, they're sarcastic. Every time that Nehemiah, I mean, uh, 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 Malachi brought up a situation to them, they got sarcastic with it. How has this happened? And how has that happened? You know, and Nehemiah answered the question and said, God loved Jacob, who's their father, but he hated Esau. Esau gave up his birthright. You know, Esau for, for a cup of soup. He gave up stuff, you know, for, he gave up what, he, what he's inherited for a cup of soup. Yeah, yeah, then, then he talks about, uh, uh, and he say, says, and, and this is like, uh, uh, this really uh, is called a, a dialogue in the, is, is an oracle. It's like God is speaking and God is telling them what they're saying to him. That's a Malachi speaking in an oracle, you know. Uh, 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 and I wrote down what the oracle is. The or oracle is a priest or a priestess acting in a medium through whom advice or prophecy was sought from the gods in the classical antiquity. He's speaking in the voice of God. It's not, you know, like the preacher stands and, and say, God says, and dwell me with his word. But this particular pre uh, 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 prophet is speaking as if it was God speaking. That's the oracle. Yeah, the theme of this whole book is God loves his people even when they ignore or disobey him. He still loves them because his love is agape. You know, in spite of us, he still loves us. Yes, yes. So, so in, this, in this first chapter of Nehemiah, I mean of Malachi, uh, 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 he's condemning the people for being like the days ago. They're outside the walls now doing what they said they wouldn't do. They're marrying foreign women and they're taking on their gods. Malachi said, says that, you know, that, 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 that you're despising God. You're despising your father by doing that. They ask that same question. Where when have we despised thy name? You're asking the same thing. They, they've been sarcastic, you know. And then he comes back and told them, he says, you offer polluted bread upon my altar. They had, you know, God, you go all back to Leviticus. He said, bring to me spotless lambs. Bring, bring to me the best you have. They were bringing blind stuff to them and, and lame stuff to the altar. They forgot about their, 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 their rituals, the, the, the things they're supposed to do. They were, they were taking shortcuts, brothers and sisters, just like we do. They're taking shortcuts. Yeah, we know it's the right way to do things, but we'll cut across the grass and do the wrong thing. You know, we think we're doing right. They, they, they was doing right by offering an offering up to God, but they offered the worst offering. They was keeping the good stuff to themselves. They were offering more to the priest than they were to God. Right now, brother, we, we, you know, we, we, we are in this pandemic, and, and I hear him every Sunday talk about 
send your money in, send your tithes in, because this place has got to operate still. And, and, and there's some people on payroll still. And we still got to take care of those. That's, that's why you give, so that we can move on, build up the kingdom. And folks still taking shortcuts because we don't see them, see. We don't see them, so they, they forget the tide. I'm going to give them an excuse. They forget the tide. Yeah. But these folk did the same thing. You know, their offering was not pleasing to God. And God was let them know that you come in here with these burnt offerings and they're blind, they're lame, they're spotted all over, and, but you give the priest better than you give me. And then he jumped on the priest in the, in the second chapter because the priest was taking bribes and doing what the people wanted to do. A lot of folk right now today, a lot of churches right now, they full of preachers preaching what the, people, what the folk want to hear. You know, the, 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 the book of Hebrews says that the, that the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. That means it's supposed to cut. It's for correction. So it's for edifying. That's what the word does. The more word we get in us, the more we get shaped and, and, and be prepared for, for heaven. Because Jesus went to prepare a place for prepared people. And we get prepared by the word cutting us to get us correct. Just like the brother said about that love. God loves us in spite of us. In spite of us. And then they said at the end of that, that chapter 2, they asked another silly question at the end of chapter 2. He said, where is the God of judgment? Where is the God of judgment? Now, like I told you before, these folk had been, they, they made an oath that, that, that they were going to follow God. They were going to do all of his commandments. They were not going to, they were not going to the, the marry wives of foreigners. And uh, they, they were, they were going to give their third of, they said a third of the shackle, a third of the income they're going to give to God. And they right now uh, are, are going against everything they said they was going to do. And now they want to ask, where is this God of judgment? Where is this God of judgment? Well, Malachi said, he said this. He, it, it, this is my scripture. He said, he said, he said, I will say, this is God speaking. I will send my messenger. And if you know anything about the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, and Luke says that John the Baptist came out of the wilderness as the messenger. He came with the message. He was baptizing in the Jordan. This is that messenger he was talking about. I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. That's John the Baptist. And then he says, and the Lord whom you seek, that one you asked about, that judgment whom you seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant. That, me that messenger is a whole different messenger. That's Jesus right there. That's Jesus right there. He's coming, and he's coming after John the Baptist. And according to Jesus in Luke, Luke 4, Jesus, sa Jesus said that, that he came, he's coming to what? Uh, to the brokenhearted. See, and, the, and the, the Spirit of the Lord was upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I got to find that one. But, but that's Jesus coming after John the Baptist. John the Baptist. He's coming after John the Baptist. Then he said this. He says, he says that that messenger, even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in, Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. And he said, he said, he said, but who may abide in the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is the refiner's fire and the fuller's soap. You know, the refiner's fire is that, you know, we got all kind of fire. Right here in California, we got a lot of fire. We got these forest fires. These fires just burn up hills and it's uncontrolled until they get some water on it to stop that fire. That's an uncontrolled fire. 
Then you got that fire where, where you have a kiln and, 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 they, and, they, and they melting metal down to a little bit of nothing. It leaves nothing when it's done. But then there's refiner's fire. It's set at the right temperature that when you put raw ore in, it will take all the impurities off the ore and leave you just a piece of gold. That's a refiner's fire. And that full of soap is what they used back in the day when they took the wool or the cloth and he whitened it. He took it and he scrubbed it and he whitened it. That's that, that's that, that's that full of soap. Jesus, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world was coming like a refiner's fire. And he's coming like full of soap. Every, and he said this, he said, I am the Lord and I change not. He's never changed. Everything he said he's going to do, he has done. But the one thing that Jesus said was, I go to prepare a place for you. And he said, and if I go to prepare a place for you, he said, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself. Now, you got to, you got, you got to define that you. If you say, I'm going, to de- I'm going to prepare a place for you, who's the you? It's those who have accepted Christ in their hearts. Paul says, say, if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised them from the dead, the Bible says that ye shall be saved. Those are the yous. Those are the ones that he said, I'm going to prepare a place for those folk. He says, and I'll come again and receive those folk unto myself. He didn't lie because he, he, he came once. He already came once. And, 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 and the, the world couldn't receive him like, like, we, like, 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 like he should have been received. As a matter of fact, only a few received him then. That's why he said, I got to, he said, I got to go so that, that, a, that another shall come. He said, greater works than you, that you would do when the other one comes. Because now the word will go further. He told the disciples, you know, that they'll go to Jerusalem and Judea and, and, and Samaria and to the other parts of the world. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. But he came, like I said, God says that the messenger would come. And the messenger did come. He came in the form of a baby. He came in the form of a baby. He was born, b- born in Bethlehem. He, he raised, raised in Nazareth. He walked this earth doing nothing but good to mankind, healing the sick, causing blind men to see, lame men to walk, dumb men to talk, even raising folk from the dead. But he came, he came as, as the purifier of gold and he came as a full of soap to make you and me just as white as snow. So he, so, so he took on all that mankind could give him. Hebrews said he was tempted on all sides. We don't have anybody that they can go through what we're going through. Right now, you know, I heard somebody say that the former first lady was in depression because of what's going on. We're all in some type of depression right now. Most of us are used to doing a whole lot more than we're doing right now. Amen? Amen. But Jesus, just hang on to him. Hang on to him because he hung on to you when he went to the cross. He took all your sins to the cross with him. He hung on that cross and he, 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 he bled and he died. They hung him high and stretched him wide, pierced him in the side. And, but he hung there because he was hanging on for you. But he died out there on Calvary. But thank God that he got up on the third day morning, early on the third day morning. And when he got up, all of of our sins were buried with him. And he come back and he makes us just like that refiner's the fire. He, he makes us pure as gold looking through him. God can't see us. Isaiah said when he looks at us, we're just like filthy rags. He's got to look through the lens of Jesus to see us, that gold nugget that Jesus has saved. That full of soap that he's made white as snow. Thank you, Lord. 
He said he's coming. You get to the fourth chapter of, of, of Malachi, he talks about the judgment, how God is going to judge the wicked. He's going to judge the wicked and burn all he has into rubble. But gold will stand out. We're gold. We'll stand out. God has never changed. Everything he's told us that he's going to do, he has done. And when he says that he's going to come back again to receive us unto himself, take him for his word. Yes. Malachi is a good book. It's a book that we need to take to heart because it talks about us. It might have been written 5,000 years ago, but he's talking about us. We, the children of the Most High God, have gone astray. Just like Isaiah said, each to his own way. But it's time, my brothers and sisters, that we start looking to that unchanging God, the one that's always on time. Every time we, we, we mess up, he's right there, you know, for, to forgive us. You want to know why? Because just like my brother said earlier, he's in a, he, his love is agape. You know, he loves us in spite of us, in spite of us. That's my message for today, that we need to serve an unchanging God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Today is a great day. You know, last night I heard on the news that this guy that's running for president, he picked an African-American woman to run with him. That's a good thing. We had an African-American president. Maybe, just maybe, if everybody goes out and vote the right way, we get an African-American vice president. Amen? Female. Amen? Amen. Uh, Brother DuBose gave us the people on the sick list and told us to pray for everybody and gave us all the instructions on the Bible study. Deacon Smith came out and gave us a good lesson today, which I really enjoyed. He said he, he had to quit for me. No, he didn't. He could have kept going. When the spirit moves, just don't, don't quench it. Let it go. Let the spirit work. It, it, it'll do what it, it's supposed to do. Amen. Amen. I thank uh, Pastor Campbell for allowing us to stand here in his stead. And this is a big seat to stand in because Pastor Campbell is a big man, maybe not in size, but in his knowledge. He, he's, he's got a plethora of knowledge. The more he forgot, more than I ever learned. Amen. Amen. And please govern yourself accordingly to the announcement that's been made. Uh, if, we are, if all hearts are settled, we will close out. Uh, uh. Father, we thank you for the word you've given us today. We thank you, Father, for those who heard your word. We pray, God, that your word will go forth, and you said that it would not return void. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to stand before you today. We pray, God, that all we said and done today was pleasing in thy sight. We love you, Father. We can't do anything, but we can't do anything without you. We continue to pray for our pastor, Father, uh, Reverend L. E. Campbell, that you would just touch him, Father, wherever he may be. Give him what he's asking for. But you say your word said you would give us the desires of our heart. So we ask God that if he if he asks for anything, that you will grant what he's asking for. We thank you, Father, for those who were here today and those who are running this uh, audio visual system. Thank you, Father, for their for their gifts of running this, this system. And God, as we prepare to close this session today, we, we thank you and we love you. Now may the grace of God and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit may it rest, rule, and abide henceforth and forevermore. And all of God's children said amen, amen, and amen.